to another DE Hammer video. I'd like to give a huge shout out to Hawk vs. Dove for the new intro music. You can go check them out at their Bandcamp link down below. In today's video, we're going to go over how to make the guts or the electronics of your edgelet acrylic bases. Now, the beauty of making your own uh, bases is you're not constrained by the preset functions that come with the LED strips or with the bases that you can get off Amazon or eBay. With building your own, you can add a bunch of sensors like pedometers, buttons, uh, humid uh, humidity sensors, uh, motion sensors, IR receivers, and that's just to name a few. In this video, we're going to use a pedometer to, as our input source to control what the lights are doing. Now, as for housing, uh, you can recycle something, let's say an old coffee can, or you could design one, cut it out on your CNC or print it out with your 3D printer. But our primary focus today is the innards or the electronics. So let's jump into the build. The parts uh, we'll be using for this build. As mentioned earlier, we're going to be using Arduino Pro Micro. It uses the AT Mega 32U4 chipset. The Arduino Pro Micro also has 16 input pins, nine of them being analog with five pulse width modulation outputs. And this board does supply five volts. Next, you're going to need a pedometer. Now, the pedometer is going to give you an input value of 0 to 1032. In our build, we're going to use a pedometer to give us different light variables depending upon where it's turned to. Next, we're going to need some LED lights. Now, the main thing here is you're going to want to make sure the LED lights you get are addressable. You can run these off the board or you can hook up uh, an external power source to power your LED lights if you get a bunch in there. On the current build I have, I have two of those rectangular strips uh, or 16 LEDs. Okay, next, you're also going to need some wires, wire cutter, so soldering iron, solder flux, and again, a container or housing uh, for your base and a power supply. Now that we've gone over all the parts, let's go over how do we wire all this up. Here, you're going to have the pinout of how I connected mine. Uh, the only difference is here is I have two of these lights. And the cool thing is you just take the next strip place it right there and then wire them together. Ground to ground, D out to D in, and four to seven uh, volts to four to seven volts on the board over here. For your pedometer, you can wire the, mix the ground from here, splice these two together and then run a single ground to the board. Coming out for the power, the VCC here, the red line, you can come out, splice it off, run one to the pedometer, then run one to the uh, voltage on the LED board. Then for the DN, we're saying take the pin seven here and connect it to the DN. This is the end. This is what's going to communicate and tell us which pixel to turn on. And last but not least, the pot analog read. That's going to be the middle one. And you will run it down to uh, pin nine. Now, uh, that one does need to be on an analog. It is an analog read pin. You're going to be getting 0 to 1032 input. And that's how we're going to base what our LEDs are doing from that reading. For software, you're going to need the Arduino IDE. You're going to need the library. You're going to need to add the libraries, the NeoPixels by Adafruit. I think I'm saying that right. And you will need the CH340 driver for the USB communication. Uh, most of you should have those if you are running um, a Gerbil CNC board. So go ahead and go to Arduino CC, find the IED software. This is where we're going to write the code to tell the Arduino uh, how to turn on the lights and read the pedometer. Go ahead and download that and get that installed. If you have not installed your CH340 drivers, you can download those from LearnSpark or you can go to the GitHub page and download them there. Before we get going, uh, jump into the code, you are going to need to go to Tools. You're going to go need to go to Manage Libraries. And we'll wait for that to come up. Library Manager. Here, you're going to want to put in Adafruit. 
underscore neo pixel. And if it will ever catch up, there we go. So I'm going to take its time. And as you can see, I have this right here, Adafruit NeoPixel uh, version 1.6. Could update, but it's working, so not going to mess with it. But that will be the library we're using to drive our LEDs in this program. All right. The other thing is, if uh, the Pro Micro is not showing up on your boards, you can come in here, Pro Micro, and then select um, one by bridge enables communication between the Linux processor and the microcontroller and install that. And after you do install stuff like that, I always suggest close out and then get back in. Once we have the board and library installed, we're going to go to tools and then make sure your board is set to the Arduino micro. Uh, I'm using this programmer. And then I don't have it connected right now, but then you would select which port it's on right there. So to give a brief overview of how our main loop in the software is going to work, here's kind of the flow. We're going to check the analog read, which is our potometer. We're going to change the lights based on potometer reading. And then we're going to send those readings to sub loops, which then delay before going back and checking the analog read again. Now for the readings, on the potometer, the zero will make that off. One through 255 will change the LEDs to red. 256 to 510 will be green. 511 to 765 will be blue. 766 to 868 will be a random uh, color for each LED. And then 869 to 1032 will be, we'll pick random pixels to turn different colors. And we'll get more into that as we look at the code. Now I will put this uh, code up on my, my portfolio page so you can uh, copy and paste that from there. Uh, link will be down below. First off, we're gonna start off. Uh, we need to include the NeoPixel library that we added earlier. Then we need to define our pins and um, we need to define what is on what pin connected to the Arduino. On pin seven, that's where our LED is connected. On the num pixels, that's the number of LED lights that are connected. Then on the pot, that is A9, that's our analog read of the potometer. So here we're going to initialize our integers that we'll be using. An example of these first three, that is going to be the last red, blue, or green value that we set for the pixel. Then next you need to do void setup which we get our pixels going here. And then we're going to come to our main loop. Now, as discussed earlier, the main loop, we're going to check the analog read, change lights based on potometer reading, sub loops, and then delay. All right, so here, here's our integer pot value, value equals analog read pot. So we're telling the software, hey, go find out where the dial is and get that number and turn it back. So if that pot value equals zero, we're gonna run our sub loop LED stop. Now, if that pot value comes back and it's one or greater, it's between one and 255, we're gonna run this part where we're gonna say the last R red value equals the pot value. So if it's one, it's gonna be dimmer and if it's 255, it's gonna be brighter. And then we'll run our sub loop here, red LED, and we'll come down, scroll down here, where to go? Here we go, red LED. Basically what we're saying here is for each NumPixel that we have, and remember we set NumPixel to 16, we're gonna start at zero and then we're gonna add one more. So it's gonna loop through all our pixels and it's going to go, it's going to set that pixel right here, pixel I. So that could be one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever. And the pixels color, we're going to say last R for last red. And then we're going to set green and blue to zero. So remember R, G, B. And then pixel shows 
comes in and actually sets that pixel to that color at that brightness. And we do need to do, I'm not sure why that's marked out, but we need to turn all these delays on for these. I think I was just playing around mess, testing things out. So when that gets done, it delays, oh, it delays and then comes back and starts back at our main loop and takes another uh, pot rating. Okay, so we've done RGB, we've done red, green, blue. Now let's get in and look at the RAND LED and what that's going to do. First, we're going to set all our zero, uh, set all our pixels back to zero, and then we're going to run RAND LED. And let's go find it right there. That's faster. All right. So here, void RAND LED. We've set everything to zero, and again, we're going to circle through all the num pixels here. And then the first thing we do, we're running another one, another sub loop, RAND color A. And what does RAND color A do? Well, it goes in, it gets the pitometer value. It reads that. Then it generates three different numbers between seven and 32 for green, red, and blue. We're gonna randomize the RAND time again. And then down here, we're going to set it. We're going to set the last R value to be pot value times two divided by R. Now, what is all that? Why are we doing that? And this is why. This is how we're going to get a color value between zero and 255. The pot value has a minimum of 766 and a max of 868. Those are the settings we we chose for for where the pitometer was at. So if we multiply this times two, we get 1,736. Now, remember on that random red, green, blue, our min was minimum was seven and our maximum was 32. So to see what the biggest number is we could get, we take this times two, get that, and then divide 1,736 by seven gives us 248. So it's not giving us a maximum of 255, but this seven is the lowest we can get without going into floats uh, to 255. If we went down to six, we this number would be above 255. So we're trying to keep this max RGB value here at uh, below 255. And then we set each uh, red, green, and blue pixel. And then it comes back up here and it sets that pixel to the last R, G, and B. And then again, we do pixel shows and it changes the actual pixel. We have another little random delay. All right, sorry about that. Had some old code in there, took that out. So um, we'll show the pixels. Um, we'll get the pot value again, and then we'll generate another random time to delay before we go and set the next pixel in its color. And once it's gone through all that, it's going to go back to the main loop. And again, it's going to take the pot value again and then determine where you're at in the loop. Now for the last one here, the ran picks. So let's go down there. All right, so in the RAND picks, um, we're going to randomly pick a pixel between 1 and 16 to turn on or off. And so if we just, you know, said, hey, pick this and then randomize the actual colors, you never get a pixel turn truly turned off. So the RAND OF is actually going to help determine if the light is either on or off. So are we going to give it color or no color? And I think this adds a cool effect. So it just goes right here. And then to get zero one, you know, zero two, and then it will return. And if that ran off number that we set here is zero, it sets everything to zero. Again, a random time to wait between all that. And then if the random on off is one, we're turning on that pixel, then we'll run ran color B and then uh, we'll set the pixel colors there. 
Now let's look at RAND color B real quick. Again, take an analog read of your pop meter, get uh, a random integer, this time between nine and 80 for your green, your red, and your blue. We'll do another random time and then set the RAND time there. Then just like in color, RAND color A, we're going to do the pot value times two divided by R. So in the RAND color B here, what we're seeing is our pot value minimum is gonna be 869 to 1032. So we're gonna take the highest number, 1032, times it by two to get 2064. Now our RG minimum and our RG maximum is 80. So we're gonna take the min with the max here, divide that to give us a max RG value of 229. Again, if we went to eight, we start have to uh, we would have to start dealing with floats, and I really just didn't want to deal with that. I just want to stick to whole numbers and make it simple. And that's pretty much the code. Now go ahead and change it up, make whatever changes you want. Here, this is where I have them on my board. If you're using a different board, you may need to use a different pin number than I used. And that does it for today's video. If you want to see more videos like this, hit that like and subscribe button down below. Again, I like to thank Hawk vs. Dove for the intro music. They also did the music you're going to hear in the time lapse following this. Uh, this is a time lapse of me working on the DS9 design for the Edgelet acrylic you're seeing. Uh, also, I'll post a few more photos of the actual wiring and how it's all inside the box. So until next time, keep making stuff.